Good evening. Welcome to Word on Wednesday. I hope everyone is doing well tonight. I thank you for taking time out of your schedule to come and tune in tonight. We're going to get right into the Word on tonight. Uh, get your Bibles out. Get your notepads out. I believe you need to begin to start writing down things as the Lord begin to speak through me tonight with this message tonight. We're talking about the prayer of faith. The prayer of faith. And we, we started a prayer series on Sunday. I'm going to continue to keep teaching and, and, and speaking about prayer until the Lord changes the message to something else. But I'm here to tell you tonight, God spoke to me a couple weeks ago that he, he is want his children, he wants his children to get into a place to where they know that that God, that he hears them while they're praying in faith. And so we're going to get ready to open up in a word of prayer on tonight. So grab your Bibles, won't you turn to Matthew chapter 6, Matthew chapter 6. I'm going to be reading six, chapter 6, verse 25 through 34. And I'm going to pray. Father, we just thank you right now in the mighty and matchless name of Jesus Christ. I just praise you, Lord God, for all of your children that are tuning in tonight. I just pray, Lord God, that you help, help me to rightly divide the word of truth that as you have given it unto me on tonight. Holy Spirit, you know you have complete authority and reign in this house. But we thank you for your power. We thank you for your, your, your leading and your guiding. I will not quench you. You have your way in this Bible study on tonight. Move by your spirit on tonight. Just have your way right now tonight. Just move. Have your way tonight. For you know what your people have need of. And so, Lord, we just thank you. We praise you. We give you the glory and the honor. It's in Jesus' mighty name as I pray. Let the people of God say amen. amen. If you have your Bible with you, I want you to look at Matthew chapter 6, verse 25. Let me read verse 6, 25 through verse 34. And it reads as this. It says, Therefore I tell you, do not be anxious about your life what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on, is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? He says, look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not more valuable than them? Now, these are the words of Christ right here. And they, notice they're in red. And he says, And which of you, by being anxious, can add a single hour to his span of life? And why are you anxious about clothing? Considering the lilies of the field, how they grow, and they neither toil nor spin. He says, And yet I tell you, even Solomon in all of his glory was not arrayed like one of these he says but if God so clothe the grass of the field which today is alive and tomorrow is thrown into the oven will he not much more clothe you O ye of little faith he says therefore do not be anxious saying what you shall eat what shall we eat or what shall we drink or what shall we wear he says for the Gentiles seek after these things and your heavenly father knows that you need them all. So God knows what you need, right? And so he says, but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. He says, therefore, do not be anxious about tomorrow, for tomorrow will be anxious for itself. Sufficient for the day is it owns trouble. Verse 30, 34. Let me read that again. Therefore, do not be anxious about tomorrow, for tomorrow will be anxious for itself. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. Tonight, I want to talk about the importance of the of far as prayer faith. If you look at this, this set of scriptures right here, where Jesus is, is giving you the illustration of how people in the world have a tendency of worried about certain things or being anxious about certain things. But the people in the church shouldn't be very anxious or worried about those things. Because if you're anxious or you're worried, you're not in faith. Are y'all with me tonight? He says, that, I want you to put up verse 31, please. Put 31 up there. He says, therefore do not be anxious, saying, what shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or what shall we wear? We don't need to be concerned about food. We don't need to be concerned about clothing. And better yet, in Christ, you don't even need to be concerned about shelter. For God promised to add these things to your life. If, 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 if he can take care of the grass, or if he can take care of the fowls of the air, or the birds, rather, and they neither sow nor they reap, but if he takes care of them, don't you think he's able to take care of you? 
So God never wanted us to go in prayer in worry, being worried or being anxious of what we're praying about. If God said he's going to do a thing in our lives, then we need to believe him at his word and stop allowing our emotions to shift us from faith to becoming anxious. Because he's telling you right here in this verse, do not be anxious or, or be not anxious for nothing. And I'm going to show you why. Anxious is not, being anxious is not the, the type of mentality nor the heart that we as believers need to have. Our hearts and our minds need to be fixed and focused totally upon what scripture says. And we need to let the word of God govern our hearts and our minds. Because when we allow the word of God to govern our heart and our hearts and our mind, it will sustain us to give us the peace to let us know that God is going to provide the very things that we call of the necessities of life. Look what he says in verse number uh, 34. He says it again. Do not be anxious about tomorrow. There are people right now today really concerned about what's going to take place on tomorrow because of what has taken place on today. If what has taken place on today has caused to move you to trouble you, caused you to lose sight of God's word, you need to repent and get back on board with what God says to, to begin to calm your spirit down, to get your heart anchored and rooted and grounded down with what God says and stop allowing the circumstance or the situation that you face or even the answer that you need to manifest. Stop allowing the answer to trouble you when you've already got the answer from God's word. Are y'all with me tonight? Put up Philippians chapter 4 verse 6 and 7. Paul says right here, he says, do not be anxious about anything. So if I'm going to the Lord in prayer, I'm not going to the Lord in prayer worried. I'm not going to the Lord in prayer. Once I pray a thing in faith, I believe he heard me. I believe I receive it and that settles it. But in the process of me praying in faith, Making sure I guard my heart and my mind from shifting from faith to being anxious. I have to make sure I keep the scriptures before me so it can instruct me, instruct me as to what I need to do. Look what he says. He says, but in everything by prayer. Did he say pray for some things? He says, but in everything by prayer. Some of us are not praying because we're trying to work things out ourselves, which causes us to shift to becoming anxious. We're, we, we're, we're, we, we can't wait on God. God. God's taking too much time. He's just too slow. God is not slow at all. God has a perfect time when he's going to manifest the thing. But I really truly believe within my heart that the manifestation of what God wants to do in our life according to our desires, it takes place in our lives when we mature in the faith. When we show God that we have grown up and matured in the faith, we won't be anxious. We'll be rooted and grounded and built up in faith to because we know that in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, thanksgiving will be in your mouth when you're not anxious. When you're anxious, when I find out people who are anxious, they're murmuring and complaining. God's just taking too long. Why did I have to wait this long? Didn't God say? God doesn't say it out of the mouth for two or three witnesses. And, and, and the Bible said, let every word be established. But it just seemed like it's taking forever. That don't sound like to me somebody that's, that's, that's a person in faith. Your words is telling me what's really deposited within your heart. It's not so much as God's word that's been deposited in your heart. It's really the cares of this life that has choked the word. That's the reason why you're speaking that way. He says, well, let your request be made known. How? Through thanksgiving. Someone who's anxious and not thanking for nothing, they be like, hurry up. Hurry up, Lord. Make haste, O Lord. Not to say the Lord will not make, that's not scripture, to make haste, O Lord, meaning to come quickly, but I cannot have faith mixed with, with being anxious. Or, or better, I can't be patient and be anxious at one moment. I have to make sure that I, I stay rooted and grounded in faith so that I can have patience have her perfect work in me that I may be full and complete expecting God to do it in his time versus me trying to get him to perform it really quick because I can't wait on the Lord. But look what he says in verse 7. He says, And the peace of God which surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. I said it Sunday that you could be praying 
and praying unto the Lord. And sometimes God will speak to you by his word. He'll give you an answer, a revelation as to what you're praying for. Or if you don't hear him speak, you can sense his peace. His peace will come over you and that peace, it surpasses understanding. You know you didn't get this peace. You know then you didn't go out and obtain this peace. This peace was 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 yes, Lord. This peace was was released to you because you draw nigh to God and He draw nigh to you. Anytime God is in the midst of anything, peace is with Him because He's the Prince of Peace. Are y'all with me tonight? Yes. So when the peace comes upon you, that peace is designed to guard your heart and your mind from things that are going to challenge you to make you. Get over in the flesh to become anxious and not wait on the Lord. God is expecting us to wait on him. Say, I'm going to wait on the Lord. I'm going to wait on the Lord. Put a 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 17 and 18. Paul says right here that we're supposed to pray sometimes. He says, pray without what? Ceasing. Pray without ceasing. If you got time to murmur and complain, you had time to use prayer instead of murmur and complain. Let's pray without ceasing. But look what he says in verse 18. He says, give thanks. This is what God showed me. He said, many of my children have come to me and make their requests known in faith, but they don't put no thanksgiving in their mouth in their prayer life. Lord, bless me with this house in Jesus' name, amen. And you get up, and you, there's, there was no thanks in that, inside of that prayer, was it? Lord, I want you to heal my body because you said by your stripes I am healed and made whole. I receive the word in Jesus' name. Amen. Was there any thanksgiving in that? I think what happens is some of us have allowed our natural man to cripple our spiritual man to what we want to wait to thank him after the manifestation shows up. Scripture, he tells us to thank him while we're in prayer. Father, thank you for even taking time to listen to what I got to say as I pray according to your will. He says, because give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. So if I'm praying without ceasing, I'm giving thanks to God, for this is the will of God. You want to know the will of God in prayer? Give thanks. I'm going to say it again for the people in the back. You want to know the will of God? Give thanks. Because as you give thanks, praying Without ceasing, it will become a habit that you have thanksgiving in your mouth with it, as well as in your heart. If you can put it in your mouth, you can have it within your heart. But this is something he showed me today. He said, son, he said, there's some people who have said things out of their mouth as to what my word says. And they may have put forth the action. And then, Lord, Lord, Lord I'm going to help you all a lot of y'all out right now tonight, tonight. They may put forth actions to what the word says. But within their heart, they really don't want to do it. So I'm going to go to prayer. I'm going to pray about it. That don't sound like somebody who has confidence and faith in God's word. That's somebody feel like you burden them down to pray to God. If it becomes a burden to pray, I don't think you're praying to the right God. Because you praying to God in faith, who is who is the God who has the anointing? The anointing removes burden and destroys yokes. But if you bog down and perplexed with many trepidations of life, that lets me know you're not praying to my God in faith. You're praying in being either anxious or you're in a place of unbelief because you think the circumstance outweigh the answer from God's word. Put up Romans chapter 12, verse 12. He says, rejoice in hope, be patient in tribulation, and be constant in prayer. Did y'all hear that? Rejoice in hope. Hope of who? Hope of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is a hope of glory. Be patient in tribulation. Tribulation, persecution come for the word's sake. It's come to attack your faith because you're in Christ. Remember Christ said you're being persecuted because of me. So tribulation has come because you decide you want to live a born-again lifestyle. So therefore, prayer is a byproduct of your life. This is your culture. This is how you live. Someone who prays constantly every day, they're, they're, not, they're not looking or waiting for circumstances to arise, arise in their life to create tribulation. They're praying to God when there is no tribulation. That's right. That's right. I'm not 
not waiting on the masses for the pray. I'm going to pray by myself. And this is what you have to do. You have to get yourself in a place to where you're in constant prayer. Constant prayer. Don't wait for something bad to happen to pray. Don't wait even when things are good. Pray always, whether it's good or bad going on in your life. Pray constantly and have thanksgiving in your mouth to say, you know what, Lord, even though the bad seems like it has me outnumbered, glory be to God, it is you who is sustaining me and keeping me from failing. It is you who kept me from falling. Pray to that bad thing that has come up against me. Thank God that the situation didn't come out the way it wasn't working in your favor. I think what happens is people who begin to talk about what the devil is doing, they don't have no thanksgiving in their mouth. I ain't acknowledging anything the devil has tried to do to me and make an attempt against my life. I'm going to begin to acknowledge God for saving me. I'm going to acknowledge God for, for, for preserving me and sustaining me in the midst of my trials, in the midst of my tribulations. Because I want to stay in a place of constant prayer. Put up Romans chapter 8 verse 32. He says right here, Paul says, he who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for all for us all. How will he not also with him graciously give us all things? See, that's a sacrifice that already been made on your behalf. Jesus Christ laid down his life for you and I to live. And the father is very aware of that. The father was pleased with that. So because the father was pleased with that, the father gave us access through the son. So us delighting ourselves in the Lord, he will give us the desires of our heart. As we commit our ways to God, we trust God, and he will surely bring those things to pass. That's what he says, Psalms 37, verse 4 and 5. Are y'all with me tonight? But see, this is the problem with the church the day that many of us are carrying the cares and the concerns of this life that is designed to choke the word. And we don't need to allow the cares and the concerns of this life that are designed to choke the word to stop us from praying in faith. 1 Peter chapter 5 verse 7 which is one of my favorite scriptures says casting all of your anxieties on who? On God, casting all of your anxieties on him because he what? He cares about who? You. God cares about you. So this, this, this scripture right here almost parallels, actually it does parallel with Psalms 55 verse 22 where it says, Cast thy burden upon God and he shall sustain thee for he shall not suffer the righteous to be moved. If you're being moved today by the circumstance or the situation that's causing you to become have an anxiety, it's only because you're not rooted and grounded and built up in what the word says. You have to get yourself in a place to where you become rooted, grounded, built up, having the confidence in God's word, knowing that God, what God's word says. You don't have to wait till the test show up to know what God's word says. You need to take your time of peace and begin to study, to search out the scripture. The Lord said, I remove the trouble people out of your life. And now that the trouble people are gone out of your life, you don't need to keep looking on social media to see what they're doing to cause trouble under other people. I remove them out of your life. But now that they've been gone away for such a time as this, I need to see more study time from you because you, you, you're so busy watching the troubled ones and you're not looking at the one who gave you peace. It's time for you to learn to me so that you can be built up so that if those troubled people decide to try to reattach themselves at a later date, you will say, you know what? If God separated you before me in my life, there's no need for us to reconnect. This is how you protect your peace. It's coming to a place of knowing so that when you go to God in prayer, you're praying God's perfect will for your lives. He's expecting us to have constant prayer. Pray without ceasing. Having confidence in God when we go to the Lord in prayer. But look what he says in Colossians chapter 4 verse 2. Colossians 4 verse 2. Paul says, continue steadfastly in prayer, being watchful in it with what? Think of that word again. Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving is, is an important 
part of our prayer life. If you're not praying to the Lord with thanksgiving in your heart, you should be excited to be able to talk to the living God and for the living God to hear you. That's enough. Yes, Lord, I hear you. That's enough right there to begin to acknowledge God for the simple fact that he's listening to your prayer. You're talking about the almighty creator. The possessor of heaven and earth who, who's listening in attentively to your prayer as you pray in faith. Listen, I ain't even opened up my mouth yet to make my request known. And he already know what I'm going to pray for before I pray. Yes. That right there, I'm thankful that he is listening to me. Yes. He hears me. That should get you excited enough before you go to the Lord in prayer. But what happens, many of us go to, oh, Lord. Jesus. And I'm not saying you can't go to the Lord crying in prayer. I'm not saying you can't do that. But how are you going to be crying and giving thanksgiving at the same time? Unless it's tears of joy. But most people go to the Lord in prayer crying. They cry because they ain't paid. Lord, if it be your will, take this cup away from me. I don't want your cup. Just take this cup away from me. That's not the will of God. The reason why that cup showed up in the first place is to test to see what you're made of. Do you know every cup that, show, that you have to drink of is designed to test to see what you're made of? The problem is you say you pray, but you don't act like you pray. Somebody who pray ain't move. Somebody who prays are always calm. Somebody who pray ain't, ain't worried about what's going on in the world because their faith have them so focused on what God's word says that you know what, I have to answer to the situation and the circumstance they have everybody else surrounded. Do you not care if we perish or die? No, you may perish and die, but I ain't dying today because the Lord told me I'm going to leave. Yes. That prayer produces confidence. It's like he said in his word in 1 John chapter 5, verse 14, that I read on Sunday. Then it says, this is the confidence that we have in him, that when we pray according to his will, he hears us. He hears us. When I know God hears me, then why am I going to leave outside of prayer and be worried about something? If you go to the Lord in prayer and come out of prayer, worried about something, you didn't go to the Lord in prayer and faith. You wasn't in faith. You just did something to do something. You know, I went to church. I prayed about it, but I'm still troubled. It's because you didn't meditate on the word of God to come out of your troubled mind. The word of God should govern your heart. The word of God should govern your mind. When it guards your heart and it guards your mind, it gives you peace. I'm at peace about everything with life right now. I was like, Lord, just take the reins of my life. There's times when I go to the Lord in prayer, I don't know what to pray. I pray in the spirit. Sometimes I run out of, the, I run out of English words of what to pray. That's why he graced me with the gift of tongues. And if he's graced you with the gift of tongues, you need to utilize your gift. Look, yes, Lord. The reason why some of you are on here on this online tonight that you trouble is because you're not utilizing your gift and the enemy knows you possess it. If the enemy can muzzle your mouth from speaking in tongues, he, he's defeating you. He, he's defeating you on your own ignorance. You've been given enablement from on high to speak in tongues, a language that is not known to man, but a language that's the perfect will of God, that's known unto God himself, and I'm going to pray it until it ain't going to ever run out of style. Right. Man, don't you know you've been praying in tongues for hours, so I'm going to keep on praying. Right. I'm going to keep on praying. Listen, yes, Lord, I hear you. I'm not praying for the Lord just to hear me. I'm praying so that my spirit man can be built up to hear the law. Y'all better stay with me tonight. You go in the law with many words, big, big, eloquent words. Lord, like Ann, I don't need to hear all that. All I need to hear is the prayer of faith. Because really, in, 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 in prayer, the most important thing is, is faith being operated within us so that we can hear the answer as to what he's going to say about our faith. 
Yes, Lord. It's not about just God said, I'm pleased with your faith. Okay? It's not about just him being pleased with your faith. You know he's pleased with your faith when the answer shows up. The answer can't come unless faith has already been established. Y'all stay with me tonight. If, if you have faith and your faith is in, in operation, when the, when the answer shows up, he was pleased for the fact you came to him in faith. So when he releases the answer to you, the answer manifested because he was pleased with your faith. You, you are supposed to, yes, Lord. You are supposed to seek the Lord's face, not his hand. Too many folks are praying for the hand to move, but they ain't touching his heart. Because <laughs> they ain't praying the perfect will of God. What's the perfect will of God? His word. So, put Colossians 4, 2 back up there, please. There's something that stuck out with me when I read this earlier. He says, continue steadfastly in prayer, being watchful in it with thanksgiving. So let me, let me get you to center that scripture. Being watchful. Watch as well as pray. You got to be watchful. You got to be alert. You got to be on guard. Because your adversary, the devil, is walking about as a ruined lion, seeking whom he may devour. He's trying to get you caught up with the cares of this life. He's trying to weigh you down with many anxiety woes and, 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 and troubles to, to make you think that God is not able when God is able. So we got to be watchful. Say be watchful. Be watchful. Got to be watchful in prayer. Amen? Amen. Put up Luke 18, 1. It says in verse 18, I mean verse 1, it says that he told them a parable to the effect that, though, that they ought to always to pray and not lose heart. These are the words of Jesus. This is about the parable, of the, you know, about the persistent widow. But I'm just saying that. We should always pray and not lose heart. People who lose heart are no longer praying. In fact, people who lose heart had just cast away their confidence and forfeit the great recompense of reward. People who lose heart have fainted within their minds to say, I give up. I can't wait on God. But those who have confidence in the Lord, they hold fast to their confidence that the Lord has given them and they allow patience to be employed so that they won't shift from patience to being anxious. They remain steadfast and patient by letting patience have a perfect work, bringing us to full, complete maturity right before the manifestation of what God began to tangibly place within our lives because we prayed in, in faith. I'm going to say this. When we go to the Lord in prayer, we know we go to the Lord in prayer in faith. We know we go to the Lord in prayer with thanksgiving in our mouth. And we have to make sure that when we come out of prayer, before we come out of prayer, we close the prayer out in the name of who? Jesus. Jesus. That's the close. That's the deal. The deal's signed. Signed, sealed, and delivered. It's done. Because we're praying unto the Father, which is in heaven. He is the one who hears our prayers. We're doing the same thing Jesus did. Jesus prayed unto the Father. Jesus was showing us how to pray to the Father and have effectual, to have the effectual and fervent prayers manifest, answer to where there's power within. When you go to the Lord in faith and in having thanksgiving, you got power at work within your mouth in your prayer life. Are y'all with me tonight? Say, do not lose heart. Put up Mark 4, 19. It says, but the cares of this of the world and the deceitfulness of riches and the desire for other things enter in and choke the word, and it proves unfruitful. Now, looking at that verse, that was talking about the parable of the sower. We know the, 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 the source of the what? The word. So if the word of God is incorruptible seed, 
which that which I'm supposed to be speaking, whether I'm speaking into your lives tonight or if I'm speaking to the Lord in prayer, I'm speaking the incorruptible word to the Lord. I'm speaking his words back to him. Not that he's forgotten what he said. It's that we have the tendency of forgetting because the cares of this life try to come in and try to choke the word to keep us in a place to where we're unfruitful. You can tell the ones who have a productive prayer life. Look at the confidence that they exude from their countenance. What do you need me to have to pray for? Well, you know what? I'm suffering pain. Well, let's pray. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. And they pray immediately. And all of a sudden, you see the manifestation of healing showed up. Listen, y'all got, got to stay with me tonight. God said we can't allow the cares of this life. What you have need of. What you have need of food, drink, transportation, housing, in need of love. Because that's one of the top tier things. Now, I just need love. I'm tired of being lonely. You might need to be lonely with the Lord for a while so the Lord can begin to do some unthinked things, those jump in your heart so that you can begin to stop running people away. I heard you, Lord. You got too much junk in your heart. That's running people away. People can't stay around you because you mess it. You jacked up. And you're confused. Because you run around telling everybody you're anointed, but you're annoying. <laughs> Even God said, I'm closing my ears to you because you're annoying. You come in here with repetition prayer. Lord, if it be your will, heal me. 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 First of all, that, that, that right there is not even in faith. If it be your will. But the cares of this world has choked folks with the word. That's why they go to the Lord with no word in their heart. And they begin to pray. And they wonder why their prayers are not answered. Because the cares of this life and the deceitfulness of riches or the cares of this world. And, this, and it says that the desire of other things. Now, that's, a, that's the part I, I saw today. The desire for other things. Now, it, did, it wasn't specific. But the desire of other things meaning that you have chosen to do something other than rely on the word. So I'm, I'm going to give you an example of another thing. You're so concerned about your child that you're not even seeking the will of God in prayer. You're going to the Lord in prayer about your problem child, but you, have no, you don't have no answer in your mouth. So when you don't have no answer, no word, no substance in your mouth, how do you expect the God to give you some answers back to you if you're not praying to him in faith? Because if he answered you back with his word, you're going to be like, well, something told me. Right. I went to the Lord in prayer and something came over me and something told me not to do that. Well, first of all, when you say something told you, that lets me know you really don't have a close relationship with the one you went to pray for, right. pray to we got to allow ourselves to become, to be transformed by the, re, by the renewing of our minds by the word of God so that we can come out of the conformity of the things of this world. He didn't ever say that we cannot live a productive life in this world. However, we're not supposed to be worldly. Yes, Lord. Yes, yes, Lord. Do you know that the more worldly you continue on, being in that in that place after being in the church, I see why you don't have no fruit. Because the fruit can't manifest because of carnality. Carnality robs your mind of spiritual thinking. Spiritual thinking, which is righteous thinking, is what helps produce maturity in your faith walk. But if you're running around here speaking worldly and carnally all the time, I see why you, there's no growth in your life. You've been in kindergarten faith since you started in the faith. It's 32 years later. I ain't even seen you graduate from no level yet. You're supposed to go from faith to faith, glory to glory. It's supposed to be some growth. Some growth. And you wonder why you're frustrated. You wonder why you, you trouble with many cares and you press down and weigh down and you worry and you can't understand why things are not working out for your good because you got all the weight of the world within your heart and in your mind that has weighed you down and you done heard prophecy after prophecy after prophecy and you wonder why it's taking forever for it to come to pass because you failed to show God you're willing to mature. Three people called that. 
Put up this uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 16 and 17. I'm closing with this. No, I got one more scripture. Try to give y'all all I can give you tonight. Look what Paul says right here. He said, so we do not lose heart. Though our outward self is wasting away, our inner self is being renewed, what? Day by day. What does that mean? This earth suit, is, is, it's got a death stamp on it. But just because this earth suit has a death stamp on it, which we don't know the day or nor the time when we're going to exit out of his life, in the process, we need to eat of the incorruptible word, which is the word of life, the bread of life, which begins to renew us. Renew us how? Renew us in our spirit so that we can begin to live life in the abundance to the full till it overflows instead of us worrying about when we get ready to exit about his life. I'm talking to somebody tonight that's dealing with the spirit of death. I bind that spirit of death off your life. You will live and you will not die. You will come into the knowledge and the fullness of your purpose in the name of Jesus. And you will begin to sense the presence of God. The peace of God that surpasses all understanding is going to begin to rest upon you right now tonight. That may the spirit of suicide be broken off of your life in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, you know what, Pastor? I'm 68 years old and I ain't seen nothing come to pass. If you ain't 90 like Sarah, you have no complaint. Sarah was 90 when she carried a baby. <gasps> now that's what you call a hot grandma. <laughs> now they'll be like, you doing something, you ain't got no business doing. 90 years old, you got a baby. But God was just showing you that <laughs> it don't matter what age. You are. I can bring it to pass. He's don't limit me. Yes, Lord, I hear you. Don't limit me based upon your age. I, they said, don't limit me based upon your age. Yes, Lord. God, oh my. Don't limit me because the doctor says it's impossible. If my word can begin to impregnate a woman to create me, what you think I can do for you? You're limiting the power of the word. Put up verse 17. He says, for this light momentary affliction is preparing for us an eternal weight of glory beyond all comparison. That weight of glory. The weight of glory. I mean, weighty, heavy. The kavah of God. The weight of glory. Do you know what that means? That's the weight of glory that Jesus walked in. Resting on your life. You go on the Lord in prayer. Ooh, yes, Lord, I hear you. You go to the Lord in prayer. And that power hits and rests on you. You come outside at prayer time. And somebody come and start to speak to you. You have that same power Jesus had when they said, we're looking for Jesus. He said, I am he. It was so powerful that it knocked them back so far that the dead was raised. That's the kind of power he's been expecting us to walk in. But we've been caught up with the momentary afflictions of this life. Can't get caught up in that. We can't allow that to outweigh the glory of God. Yes. Are y'all with me tonight? Yes. Put this last scripture up there. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 5 of 6. He says, keep your life free from the love of money and be content with what you have. For he has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Verse 6. So we can confidently say, the Lord is my helper. I will not fear. What can man do to me? If the Lord is helping you out, what can somebody do against you? Notice this. He said, what can man? He didn't say nothing about the devil. You know why? Because the devil wasn't even in part of that, 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 that equation. He wasn't even included. A lot of times, it's not the devil messes us as another man. That we are intimidated by, or another woman that we're intimidated by, 
that may question the validity of our faith because they may know a little bit more. I hear you, Lord. You have an established relationship with God based upon your level of understanding and where you are right now in the faith. Do not be ashamed or intimidated by somebody that may be stronger in the faith than you. This is not a matter of you getting in competition with anybody. We're not supposed to compete against each other anyway. We're supposed to all come together to the unity of the faith, to the maturity of growth in Christ Jesus. I love on someone who's a, who's a babe in Christ just like I love on someone who's mature in the faith. I pray with somebody who's a babe and I pray with one someone who's mature in the faith. I will pray with them the same way because just because they're a babe don't mean I can't pray with them. I'm not going to lower my standards down to get on the baby level to pray with them. No, I'm going to stay in the mature style level to show them what maturity looks like because I was once a babe. I'm telling y'all right now tonight, God is expecting us to have the spirit of faith when we go to him in prayer. Spirit of faith, when you operate in the spirit of faith, the fruit of the spirit should be evident in your life. It should be evidence. It should be some proof. You shouldn't be anxious. You shouldn't be worried. Lord, I'm worried about my child, Lord. You know, I prayed to you yesterday, and you know, I ain't hearing that from you, Lord. I, I, I'm just worried about little Johnny. You're not helping the matter by worry. Because little Johnny doing his thing, and while little Johnny is doing his thing, you over here being affected by little Johnny's life. I know many parents, I hear you, Lord. I know many parents today that are in a place of worry about their child. I don't worry about none of my kids. I'm in faith. I'm like, Lord, you gave them to me. Take care of them. Cover them. Keep them while they're out. I, I, pray, I pray. I plead the blood of Jesus over them. Cover them, Lord. You know where they're at right now. You know what they're doing. They ain't in my presence, but, Lord, they always in your presence. And so, Lord, I'm going to rest. I'm going to bed tonight. I'm not going to toss and turn. I'm not going to panic when the phone rings at 3 o'clock in the morning. I'm going to answer like, hello? Hello? <laughs> you answer the phone like that, you was anticipating something to occur. No. If anything, I'm going to anticipate is the goodness of the Lord that I received here in the land of the living. I'm not about to allow fear to control my prayer life or my thought life. And neither should you. We have to get into a place to where we become confident in this thing. You got to become confident in this thing. Are y'all with me tonight? Yes. We got to have some real confidence. The Lord, yes, Lord. He said, if I said it, that's what you hold fast to to keep your confidence. If I said it, see, this is the thing. See, this is the thing. I go to the Lord in prayer, praying his will to him. Then I get quiet, thanking him for giving me the right words to say to him in prayer. Then I just lay there and I thank him. Then all of a sudden that peace, here come that peace. You know that peace show up? He, he, oh, he, he all up in the room. Lord, thank you for letting me feel your presence. Because I know once I get up off this floor, I'm going to be forever changed. Yes. Thank you. I'm going to stand up and face the situation and say, oh, I thought you had something. You thought you was doing something to me. Oh, that's all you have? Man, child, please. My God done gave me the answer. And the answer was yes. When you know the answer is yes, you won't be running around with your head held down like he said no. Put up this scripture for me. Put up 1 John 5, 14, 15. God just laid, I got to read that again. I know I covered that last Sunday when we got ready to close out. <laughs> My phone fell on the floor and I didn't want to get off camera. But I get it. Put up 1 John 5, 14, 15. I hope y'all getting some out of this. Yeah. When you leave up out of this church, you're going to know how to pray. Yeah. You're going to know how to pray. Look what he says. He says, this is the confidence that we have toward him. That if we ask anything according to his word, 
I changed the word will to his word because his word and will is the same thing. He said he hears who? Us. He hears you when you pray according to his will. He hears you. If you're praying according to his will, you got to have faith in what you're praying. You got to pray. You got to pray what it was written. When you pray what is written and you, and you know that his will is going to create confidence in you. But look what he says in verse 15. He says, and if we know that he hears us in whatever we ask, we know that we have the request that we have asked of him. Amen. And you know, you have something, you can run right here like, like you don't have it. That's right. Some of us still acting like we don't have what we prayed for. Ooh. You sowed a seed, but you act like you don't have the harvest because you still pretending like you broke. Right. He gave you seed to sow. Yes. If he gave you seed to sow, don't you know he have a harvest in mind? Yes. So if he gave me the ability to get it, then he already set me up for the ability to receive it. Y'all got to stay in faith, man. I ain't running around right here. You ain't never seen no worry bird. They chirping all the time because they're happy. I ain't ever went outside my house and seen no bird on, on like he's stressed out. I can't find a worm today. Oh, no. Oh, this shovel bird. Bird off. Didn't even get a chance to go get his wings brushed out. He all disheveled, looking around. You ain't never seen no word bird like that. So if the birds are not concerned, why are the people concerned? Because they don't have confidence in what the word says because they have not spent enough time in it. The study to show themselves approve a workman who need not be ashamed, who can rightly divide the word of truth. And so I'm telling you tonight, when you go to the Lord in prayer, Go to the Lord in prayer, praying his word, his will, with thanksgiving in your mouth, knowing that he hears you, that going to give you the confidence based upon what is written. And when you come out of prayer, keep that, that thanksgiving in your heart that you already received the answer and expect it to happen. Because when you expect it to happen, there's going to be a matter of time when it's going to manifest. It's going to manifest. But you got to guard your heart and your mind, folks. You can't let the enemy get into your mind and begin to trouble your mind and your heart to cause you to lose heart, to cause you to faint. Because if you faint, you just forfeited the promise of the wait. You're not willing to wait. And we got to wait on the Lord. Amen. Did y'all receive anything out of this tonight? I'm gonna keep on continuing preaching about teaching about this prayer. We got we going we gonna see some manifestations in this house before this month goes out. Amen. And even in your lives online too, we are gonna see some manifestations in your life because that's what God wants. God wants us to get into a place to where we're seeing manifestations of prayer. It's really not so much I go to the Lord in prayer for the thing or the request of what I need for him to do is really to spend time in his presence. You can't put a price on that. When you spend time in his presence, like, you know what, I know what I came to ask you for the thing, but Lord, let me just come back in your presence. Because you can get into his presence, man, you, listen, it's not so fact you'll forget about the thing, it's just that you'll be caught up in, and he begin to start explaining you other things that he wants to begin to use you to do through your life to bring glory to him. He said, if I blessed you with the plans, the provision was already calculated in. This is a word for, for some of you tonight. If God gave you a vision, provision was already factored in. You don't have to ask the Lord for provision. If he gave you a vision, provision is already factored in. But when you get a vision, you need to ask God questions such as, Lord, I got this vision here. What kind of cost I need to count? He says, okay, God, I need you to go get this. I need you to go get this. Go get this. Go get this. Go get this. Before you know it, you done, you done, you done went out and got the things, and what you were to go to accumulate, it doesn't even match what's in your bank account. Because heaven provision shows up because you're asking questions with the vision. We're talking about last year 
in, in, in April when we received this building here and even the building next door. I immediately went to the Lord in prayer because I'm like, okay, this is way much more than the ministry can handle right now based upon the physical people that are present. And even when we, we shut down for the, the months that we did during the, the pandemic, do you know that, that people stopped giving? That was a part of NFC? But just because the people stopped giving doesn't mean heaven was closed. I had to go to the Lord and pray. I said, Lord, I said, this thing is going to cost X amount of thousands of dollars to do. He said, to me, this is what he said to me. He said, son, because you came to confer with me before you leap to jump into anything based upon your, the suggestion you received from other people, just because you came to confer with me, Go ahead and get this. I need for you to do this. I want you to paint it this way. I want this type of carpet. I want this type of uh, the aesthetics to look this way. This is what I want. Don't cut any corners. Just get the cost, and I'll tell you that's what I want to be done. And I count the cost each and every way. Within in four months, over $250,000 showed up. Amen. Done. So, and notice I ain't had to get on to play no, no, no games with people. Get online and begin to start talking about you need to get more. No, I just say give from, from your heart where the Lord placed on your heart. And it showed up. Yes. Everything that we had need of to be done, the, the money showed up. It came. I said all that to say this. If God was able to do that for me, why do you think he can't do it for you? He's no respected person. He's no respected person. But you got to trust him. In order for you to trust him, you got to know what his word says. And you got to hold fast to what his word says. Don't lose sight. Don't lose hope. And definitely don't lose heart. And you will have whatsoever you pray. Because it's what you said, which is what he said, that you've now made it your words, which we didn't steal God's word. We just praying his will to him, but we know he hears us. And the manifestation, yes, Lord, I hear you. The manifestation of that thing will show up. It's going to manifest. Matter of fact, the Lord says, when you pray my will, you'll stop wasting time in places that you need to, you need to walk away from. I hear you, Lord. Some of y'all are wasting time on conditions to change, and the conditions will not change until you confer with the Lord. The Lord said, you put yourself in this dilemma. I'm talking to somebody tonight. You put yourself in this dilemma to where you're in a place of lack. It's because you have not allowed me to be the Lord of your life. Lord means that you follow. When you're not following him, you go into a place of lack, scarcity. But when the Lord is your shepherd, you shall not want. You shall not lack. So repent. Turn your, turn, turn, your, turn, turn your position. Change your mind and turn back towards the Lord. And watch and see what God begins to do in your life. Amen? Amen. Did y'all receive this tonight? Yes. the Lord and the Lord. As we prepare our hearts and minds to soul before the Lord, uh, we know that we have giving platforms here at NFC. We have four ways to give, of course, through the apps, through Cash App, through Givelify, even through Tidely, which is the text to give app. You can text to give. And so, so, listen to me. You, you got to be, in this season right now, you got to be really generous in your sowing because this is, a, this is the, 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 the holy days right now. And you giving unto the Lord uh, from your heart, as you was purpose in your heart, I want to give God the, the greatest, the greatest I can ever give him at all times. I don't want to ever shortchange him. I don't ever want to hold back. I don't ever want to get so much to where I'm in, I'm relying upon the system of this world to sustain me, but I'm relying upon the kingdom to sustain me in this world, and I'll stay in a place where I'm constantly being provided for. If you want to mail it in, we have partners that mail in week after week. They're, they're offering to this ministry, and, I, and I'm grateful for our partners online. I thank God for adding partners to this ministry because I'm telling you right now, it has helped us to be able to do things in this house where we're not struggling whatsoever. And we're going to be able to purchase this complex in faith. Glory be to God because finance is going to come in to this church for us to do what the work of the Lord that he's called us to do. And I'm telling you, I want to thank you all for taking time out of, out of listening tonight, but also sowing. Where, where it really matters. I mean, if you know that this ministry has blessed your life, you give towards it to support the work and that you know that it was God's work that was established in NFC International. And so, Father, I just thank you, Lord God, tonight as we prepare our hearts and mind to give. I bless this seed offering as they're given unto tonight, Lord God. You said if they give, it shall be given unto them 
Good measure, press down, shake it together, and run it over. Shaming it under their bosom. Father, I pray that, Lord God, for the measure they're giving out tonight in faith, you will not only meet them in their faith, but you will exceed them as far as the harvest is concerned that will be returned back into their life as I bless this offering right now and forevermore. It's in Jesus' mighty name as I pray. Amen. Amen. Listen, Facebook, y'all know I love you. I want to thank you for taking time out of your schedules tonight to tune in for Word on Wednesdays. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May his face shine upon you. May he may put his name upon your children. And may he bless you all the days of your life. I want to tell you I love you. Look forward to seeing you all on Sunday morning for Sunday morning service at 1030 a.m. God bless you. Love you. Good night.